Hey, welcome back to What Jack Has Made. In this video, I'm going to be covering Gutenberg block development using ACF Pro and then raising the fields in uh, WP GraphQL. So this is a very advanced video. So if you don't understand all the concepts first, that's fine. Um, I invite you to explore some of the plugins and some of the core um, concepts on their own before diving into this. So make sure you're familiar with ACF Pro um, and ACF Pro blocks. Um, I'll be covering how I build a block quite quickly in this video, but you'll want to be very familiar with that process. And then you'll want to have the WP GraphQL Gutenberg ACF plugin installed. That was quite a mouthful. So before we do any of that, um, I do have a disabled Gutenberg plugin installed, which will kind of mess up the process. So if you have this plugin installed, make sure you disable all of the checkboxes except for post type post, because I don't want the Gutenberg experience for blog posts. I want it to be just text and quite basic. Um, actually, no, I do use the Gutenberg in that. Um, we don't really need it in review or inspiration. We don't need it for events. So yeah, anywhere that you don't think you're going to be using blocks, I actually just remember that I do use it in my blog posts. Um, and then go ahead and save changes. Cool. And I'll quickly show you what one of my pages currently looks like, and then I'll explain how I've gone about building. So, so if we go into my about page, we have these really ugly big blocks, but um, they're quite cool. Um, they'll be a lot better at the end of the series, but for now, I'll try and explain them the best I can. Um, this is an intro block, and an intro block has a subheading, a heading, and then HTML WYSI big content. Now, I can show you what this looks like on the front end of my website. If we go to the about page, um, if my site is loading, which it should be. Yep, there we go. So, hello about Jack. I want to improve how business present themselves. And if we go into edit page, you can see that's the same content. If we go to preview, there's nothing there, which is terrible editing experience, but I'll be explaining how to better this at the end of the series. Um, this is a row um, component, which has information and a media item, which again, you can see content and media item. And so I can reorder my blocks and change the content of the page without having to create a set layout. So when I go to add a new block, you'll see I've got a standard um, Gutenberg paragraph block, but I've also got a ton of other blocks, which are custom blocks that I've made. So I've got tes testimonials, YouTube, presentations, and I'll show you how these are all set up in ACF. So within our field groups, you can see I've got a couple of new ACF field groups, all with the block um, semicolon sort of starting to the field name. And if we look at the intro block, which was a block I first demoed, you can see we have custom fields for subheading, heading, and content, which are text field, text field, and then a WYSIWYG editor. And then if you come down to the rules, you can see where we normally have post type equals post or event or case study. We can have if the block is equal to one of my registered custom posts, uh, custom blocks. And we can then surface these fields, which we'll do so in a minute um, using the WP GraphQL uh, plugins. But to get these blocks showing up as is equal to, you first need to edit your functions.php um, file. So I've gone ahead and created my own register blocks function, which takes a list of block names and then a dash icon. Um, names, which means the icon that shows up in the editor when you add the block. And then I combine the two arrays and then iterate over them and register a block for each of the blocks found. So yeah, that's quite 
Uh, that's basically the process. Um, and so if I wanted to add a new dribble block, I add in dribble, the icon, and then it will loop over it and add it into my editor. Um, you can find the documentation for the ACF register block. Uh, um, well, it's got a new function name, it's block type, but all the information surrounding this function and functionality exists in the ACF Pro documentation. I don't believe this is a free function, but it could be. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. You have to have a play around. But it's really cool because you can essentially build your own blocks without having to touch any React. I love React, but building a new block takes a hell of a time. And using uh, ACF Pro just speeds up the whole process because you're building um, sort of like headless block. And then later on, you can build your own render template, which is a bonus video at the end of this course. Um, but yeah, so I could add in a new field and then it'll show up when I'm adding the block to the editor. Now, we do have the issue of if I go to graphical and I go to my pages and look at all of the nodes, we look at the content and we should get back some sort of HTML content, but because my render templates are empty, we don't get back the information. And even if we did get back the information, all we would be doing is getting the sort of rendered HTML string and then trying to render that on the front end, which isn't really great because why bother with Gatsby if you're just going to be rendering HTML, which isn't React. Um, that can seem, I, I, I just realized that sounds quite elitist, but what I'm trying to say is the benefit of having a CMS, which is headless, is if we can get hold of all of the ingredients, we can build the recipe how we want. We don't have to just build the HTML string. We can use some of the data attributes um, and build dynamic pages or dynamic components using React. That's the benefit of React. You get the props and then you can build your own components based on the props you provide. If we just provide a string, we're not rendering any components. We're just rendering a string um, of HTML. So if I go to our page nodes, you can see we've got access to blocks as well. So instead of rendering content, we're going to look at blocks. And we want the name, and we want original content. And you can look at inner blocks if you have nested ones. And if I run this, we get nothing, which is rather odd because you'd expect that to be the custom blocks we've just created. Now, the reason they don't show up is because we're not showing them in GraphQL yet. Um, I can say ACF intro block fields, update this. And if I run the GraphQL config update, Actually, this might have been the issue because I might have needed to run this after synchronizing the database. So I'll come back to the video as soon as this is completed synchronizing. Cool. So because I synchronized my existing database with my local environment, I needed to update my Gutenberg uh, admin section again. So by running update all posts, which support editor, what the plugin did was go into each post or page and um, collect all of the uh, fields that need to be raised to the GraphQL schema. Now, I was having some issues when running this because some of the, what the plugin essentially does is it goes into each post and page and looks at the block and tries to raise the fields. And if the block doesn't have, um, if the block's registered using ACF and I haven't shown it in GraphQL, then it'll get stuck um, trying to synchronize, synchronize the schema with the posts. So I had to go through each block and show them in my schema. And I went through each of my custom field groups and just raised all of them and gave them names to show in the schema. So now in theory, when we go to our graphical, 
interface, we should be able to query the blocks um, as well as any of the ACF field groups that we had before. So we'll go into pages and look at nodes and look at blocks. And now you see we have a ton of different block names all in yellow. Now, the majority of these are going to be core blocks that are part of Gutenberg by default. Uh, these could be sort of, you know, core code blocks. So if you had a code um, example in your page or post, the block will contain information that you can raise inside your schema. But you'll notice at the top we have our ACF blocks. So as I showed you before, the ACF intro block, we have um, the standard information surrounding it, such as the name of the block, um, if it's valid, and we can run this and get the name of it. So no blocks show up, but if we go ACF, and it's still showing nothing, which is weird. So we've got a hero block, if we update that. Yeah, we've got an intro block right there, so it should be showing up. Okay, cool. Okay, that was kind of weird. So I guess you might need to manually go into the pages and update it. So if I go into edit and then update, then I assume this node should then get our intro block. Yep, cool. So the original content will be nothing because we don't have a render template or callback. But if we have a look in, so blocks, okay, wait, this is a bit confusing. So nodes, blocks, name, where did our list of blocks go? Ah, uh, okay. So now that I've updated the pages, uh, you can see when I run my query, we are getting returned the block array. And if the block is an intro block, we are querying the name of the block and the ACF fields associated with the block. All of the empty objects in the response payload are other blocks, but they aren't intro blocks. So this is great for conditional logic and bringing back information, but we want the name of every block. We don't want it just on the intro block. So we can move this outside of um, the conditional. And so now we have ACF intro, ACF rows. You can see the rest of the page is made up of rows. But then we have hero blocks, testimonials, and other YouTube ones and um, other social networks for the homepage. So let's focus on getting the about page uh, information. So if we go ACF row block, the ACF field group will contain the information for that block. So that isn't going to be the same across blocks. Each block has its own information. So we'll have content, um, a link, and then media. So when we return, you can see our ACF has the WYSIWYG content, a link if applicable, and then media information surrounding the alt text. But we could also get back to source. And now we have the information we need to actually start creating pages because the Gutenberg uh, editing experience allows us to arrange the blocks in whatever order we want and then enter in whatever data we want. And then in gaps view, we're going to be pulling down this information and then looping over the blocks using the name of the block to call a specific component and then using the ACF information or any other attributes to act as props for that component and pull in and generate dynamic components on the fly 
while also creating dynamic layouts on the fly because you can reorder the uh, Gutenberg blocks and then statically generate them using Gatsby. So that's all I wanted to cover for the ACF blocks. Uh, it's really freaking cool. Um, and it allows us to quickly create our own custom blocks, create our own custom data attributes, which will be used as props, and then expose them to our GraphQL schema, which we're going to be using in Gatsby.